Okay, so now we have our background sky for sort of views out or to be able to control the HDR in the background, we can begin to put a sunlight. So our directional light is going to act like the sun. So I change the rotation coordinates here to world coordinates. And you see it has this preview plastered all over the world, walls, which is a bit strange. Well, this is because the uh, light have different mobility settings here. We've got static, stationary, and movable. This uh, static and stationary mean that the light from this light, i.e. the sun, is going to be baked into the light mass along with the global illumination, the light bouncing around. So that's why there is a preview here, meaning that the the sun is not going to look like this once we press the build button. Okay, so what we can do to get rid of this preview button, at least while you're working or if you're showing your work, is just set this to movable. In this movable mode, the light will be completely interactive. So we're going to look at that in, in another video when we do our little animation. But for now, we want to create a soft sun shadows and we're going to bake them in the light mass. So let's go back onto stationary. Okay, so we're going to modify a few of these settings in the sun. So we've got our intensity. I'm going to put that really high. So here you see the tone mapping in action where I've gone from literally 10 to 150 and we still see some of the detail in this texture here. Normally, with such a high change, you know, things would be washed out depending on the type of color mapping you'd be using, if you use V-Ray, for example. Let's carry on. The color, I'm gonna give it quite a warm, kind of orangey glow, tint, I should say, really, and increase the saturations a little bit, keep that at the, at the top. I'm kind of uh, trying to match my reference I've got on the other screen as well. So I'm sort of looking at that. So let's build this and see what we get with the shadows. So that looks pretty good. Let's. So if I press G, as you probably know, you I get rid of all the gizmos. We can see that we've got a light bouncing the illumination has uh, changed drastically. And then we can also see that we've got a nice yellow tint due to our uh, sun being colored yellow. So that's really nice. We've got a much more precise shadow. So what we can now do is change the precision of that shadow because the sun, if you observe, will cast a, a sharp shadow near the object that's casting the shadow and then the shadow will soften as it goes away. So we can very simply do that in Unreal Engine. We must have the light as static or stationary and you can just come down to the light mass tab here. All we have to do is tick that button. Use area shadow for stationary light. So it doesn't do it by default, but it will do it now. And you can see there's the description of these control the fall of the shadows. So the shadow exponent and then um, light saturation. So that's how much the color of the light will be used for, for the bounced uh, light. So let's just build this just to check. Uh, I've gone back to medium and working on indirect light quality one for these for this build because it's quicker. So let's do that. And yes, so I'm pretty happy with that. You can see this really nice and sharp here near the wall. And so it really gives us a good contact shadow. And then it's going, so obviously we've got, we're on low quality here. So we've got this um, stepping happening, but it's really very uh, soft on this side. So that's great. One other thing that I wanted to uh, show you is how on the, in a typical situation like this, uh, we may want to break up that shadow a little bit that is going to be on the wall. 
if we're working with these long shadows. So I wanted to break that up with a mask or um, it's quite a common effect to have this uh, plane um, uh, giving um, a different shadow. So we'll do that in the next video. We'll do that in a masked material.